Muslims regard Muhammad as the perfect role model for mankind, the ideal husband, father and politician, the epitome of honesty, wisdom and mercy. On the other hand, some extreme critics say he was an evil and barbaric manipulator. As one website says, Muhammad conceived his religion to satiate his lust for power, sex and money. He was a terrorist. What is the truth? The main source of information about Muhammad comes from hadith. I'll begin by relating traditions that support the Islamic belief. The seerah of Ibn Ishaq tells us that even before Islam, Muhammad was known as As-Sadiq, the truthful, and Al-Amin, the trustworthy. Ibn Ishaq relates the incident where Muhammad was called upon by the tribes of Quraysh to solve a dispute between them. They were on the point of war over who would have the honour of replacing the black stone after the Kaaba had been rebuilt. He, Muhammad, said, Give me a cloak, and when it was brought to him, he took the black stone and put it inside it, and said that each tribe should take hold of an end of the cloak, and they should lift it together. Muhammad then placed it in position, and thus shared the honour between the tribes and avoided war. Another well-known tradition, related in the seerah, shows how even Muhammad's enemies testified to his good character and the powerful effect of the Qur'an. The Quraysh sent Utba ibn Rabi'ah to offer him power and wealth to give up his mission, saying, If what you want is money, we will gather for you out of our property so that you may be the richest of us. If you want honour, we will make you our chief so that no one can decide anything apart from you. If you want sovereignty, we will make you king. But the Prophet refused and instead recited some verses from the Qur'an. Utbah was amazed, and returned to the Quraysh, saying he had heard words such as he had never heard before, which were neither poetry, spells, nor witchcraft. Take my advice, and do as I do, leave this man entirely alone, for by God the words which I have heard will be blazed abroad. Here are a few more narrations. Muhammad was the most generous of people, he never kept a dinar or a dirham with him overnight. If he had anything left over and could not find someone to give it to before nightfall, he would not go home until he had donated it to someone who needed it. When Muhammad dispatched troops, he would tell them, Do not kill a child, nor woman, nor old man, nor obliterate a stream, nor cut down a tree. Show mercy to whatever is on earth, and he who is in heaven will show mercy to you. The strong man is not the one who is strong in wrestling, but the one who controls himself in anger. Visit the sick, feed the hungry, and free the captives. The believers who show the most perfect faith are those who have the best character, and the best of you are those who are best to their wives. This is just a selection of traditions that shows that Muhammad did do and say many good things. However, there are also many traditions that give a rather different picture. Let's go back to the seerah of Ibn Ishaq that I started with and look at the notorious incident of how Muhammad dealt with the tribe called the Banu Qurayza, members of which had sided with the Meccans during the Battle of the Trench. Ibn Ishaq said, Then they surrendered, and the Prophet of God confined them in Medina, in the quarter of the daughter of Al-Harith, a woman from Banu Najjar. Then the Prophet of God went out to the market of Medina, which is still the market today, and dug trenches in it. Then he sent for them, and struck off their heads in those trenches, as they were brought out to him in batches. Among them was the enemy of Allah, Hahay ibn Akhtab, and Kaab ibn Asad, their chief. There were 600 or 700 in all, though some put the figure as high as 800 or 900. As they were being taken out in batches to the Prophet of God, they asked Kaab what he thought would be done with them. He replied, Will you never understand? Don't you see that the summoner never stops, and those who are taken away do not return? By Allah, it is death. This went on until the Prophet of God made an end of them. All the men were executed, including the boys, who had only just reached puberty, as this hadith from Bukhari explains. Atiyah al-Qurayzi said, I was amongst the captives of Banu Qurayza. They, the companions, examined us, and those who had begun to grow hair, pubes, were killed, and those who had not, were not killed. I was among those who had not grown hair. 
Boys reach puberty at around 13 years old, which means that boys as young as 13 were taken out and beheaded and thrown into the trenches along with their fathers, brothers and uncles. Then the women and children were taken as slaves and their property divided amongst the Muslims. What makes this incident even worse is that it was only certain members of the tribe that had sided with the Meccans, and this is confirmed in Hadith. The vast majority of the tribe were completely innocent. Another episode from Muhammad's life that looks very cruel and immoral by today's standards was his treatment of the Banu Najjar in Khaybar. At one point, Muhammad orders Kinana, the keeper of the treasure of his tribe, to be tortured to tell them where the treasure is. Torture him until you extract what he has. So he kindled a fire with flint and steel on his chest until he was nearly dead. But Kinana refused to say where the treasure was, so Muhammad handed him over to a companion who beheaded him. Now Muhammad had just killed Kinana's father-in-law, and now he had tortured and killed Kinana. He then takes Kinana's wife, Safiya, and marries her, and consummates the marriage in a tent before the day is out. When the Prophet of God married Safiya in Khaybar on the way, she having been beautified and combed and got in a fit state, the Prophet of God passed the night with her in a tent of his. Abu Ayyub passed the night girt with sword, guarding the Prophet of God, and going round the tent until the morning. The Prophet of God saw him there and asked what he meant by his action. He replied, I was afraid for you with this woman, for you have killed her father, her husband and her people, and until recently she was in unbelief, so I was afraid for you on her account. Muhammad also ordered many of his enemies and critics to be killed. For example, Asma bint Marwan, who wrote poetry criticizing Muhammad for having another man murdered. When the apostle heard what she had said, he said, Who will rid me of Marwan's daughter? Amir ibn Adi al-Khatami, who was with him, heard him. And that very night, he went to her house and killed her. But perhaps one of the worst examples that Muhammad set was marrying a nine-year-old girl when he was 55 years old. Aisha reported that Allah's apostle married me when I was six years old, and I was admitted to his house when I was nine years old. There can surely not be any sane person today who would claim that this was a good example to imitate. Here are a few more hadith. He who leaves his religion, kill him. Allah's apostle said, I have been ordered to fight people until they say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Do not initiate the greeting of salam to a Jew or a Christian, and if you meet them in the street, push them to the narrowest part of it. It's clear that Muhammad's life contains good and bad examples. If Muslims are going to claim that he is the perfect role model for mankind, then they are going to have to ignore 50% of the Hadith literature, whether it is the Seerah of Ibn Ishaq, the Sunan of Ibn Majah, or the Sahih of Bukhari, because the good and bad Hadiths are pretty evenly spread over the various collections. However, it is also obvious that those who claim he was an evil power-mad terrorist will have to ignore the 50% of benign hadiths. The truth is somewhere in between these two extremes. Muhammad was simply a man of his time, an often harsh and barbaric time. The problem for Muslims is that they see him as much more than just a historical figure, and are compelled to regard his actions as having significance that stretches beyond the context in which he lived. Most Muslims get around this problem by either selectively choosing the bits they want to follow or simply paying lip service to the belief that Muhammad was an ideal role model while spending most of their lives ignoring his example. The problem comes when Muslims try to imitate every tiny detail of his life, including the cruel, violent, harsh and downright immoral episodes of his life.